Okay, the next case again is the city of Alasta case. Uh, again, as re to repeat this, with these cases will be heard by the city of Alasta on Thursday, December the 13th. This is agenda item number six, case number B8, 2012-16. Mr. Martin, would you please present. Yes, so this is also a request to rezone property, in this case from R15 to R10. It's about 1.8 acres on a single parcel. It's located at 316 Eagle Road. It's about 140 feet west of the damn place, and across from what we call the Fallwood Circle or Fallwood Subdivision. Uh, this is to the west of the Ocean <coughs> border along the Eagle Road. Um, this property was also part of a county island many years ago, a much larger one. Um, most of these little neighborhoods on the north side of Eagle Road that were zoned R15 were also zoned R15 in the county and were given the same zoning upon annexation into the city. Um, the applicant, here's our projector again, um, mm -hmm. the applicant is looking to redevelop this property um, and perhaps subdivide it into some parcels for residential development. We talked about this at length in the work session. Um, part of the handouts tonight included not only a comparison of the zoning districts, um, and if we go to that page for a moment, I just want to highlight a few things on there. This is the comparison between R15 and R10. You see in terms of land use, they are absolutely identical. They are single family residential zones. Um, the main difference is the lot size. Uh, there's like the name sound, R15 is 15,000 square foot minimum. R10 is 10,000 square foot minimum. Um, but more importantly, at least as, as far as it relates to this property, um, is the lot width and the building setbacks. R15 has a minimum width of 100 feet, R10 is 80 feet. Um, the front yard setback in R15 is 35, and R10 is 20. Um, if you look at those next pages, you see the conventional layouts. Like we talked about at the work session, this property is long and narrow. It only has 153 feet of frontage on Eagle Road. That prohibits the subdividing of it into more than one lot um, because of lack of frontage, despite the fact that it is 1.8 acres. The only way to develop this conventionally is to install a new street running north-south up into the property. The cause of Fallwork Circle, as you see on that layout plan, is directly across the street. That's where the new street would have to be located which means it's dictated that a new street has to go up the east property line. And because of a new street right away being at least 50 feet wide, it takes up approximately one third of the property in order to put in a street. So what we have done is laid out a conventional subdivision using R15 standards without any variances. And you can see the most you can get out of 1.8 acres is three parcels. You notice the parcel sizes, um, they are above the R15 minimum in terms of size, but they do meet the minimums in terms of um, lot width. Notice the setback lines, those are in the gray shaded lines within each lot. Um, R15 is fairly constrained with a fairly large rear and front yard setback. Doesn't leave a whole lot of building room. Um, your typical R15 lot is much more than 100 feet deep. So typically there's plenty of room vertically at least to put the house in the front of the rear yards. By comparison, if you look at the R10 layout on the next page, um, again, we have a, a little bit smaller lot width, so you can fit a few more lots. Um, you have a little more room within the setback areas, but also because of that street, you do not get as many lots even under R10 in there as you think. In this case, it's four, because you gain one lot by adding or change from R15 to R10. The main culprit in the design is not only the width of the street being 50 feet wide, but the requirement for a cul-de-sac at the end, which has to be a 50-foot radius or 100 feet wide. That is two-thirds of the width of the property. Um, to do this in smaller lots, you would end up with a substandard lot toward the back with not enough lot depth to allow the construction of a house. If you look at that diagram between the northern lot of 17,000 the next one to the south, you see it's 53 feet of lot depth off the cul-de-sac. 50 feet of that is tied up in setbacks. So you're left with three feet of billable area. Um, so conceivably, this is about the best you can hope for in terms of an R10 layout. Also, by comparison, if you look at the neighborhood to the east, which is the damn place of Walmart, you see some of those property lines on this R10 layout, and those subdivisions um, actually have a little third of the lots do not even meet the R15 standard, they're smaller. 
Um, but these are subdivisions that were built long before the county even had zoning. And so the, the county just assigned R15 initially, um, as with the other neighborhoods around there. But they really would, um, if they were to be zoned to develop that way today, they would be R10. But what I wanted to point out on the R10 layout is in those neighboring streets, you see the depth of the property has four lots. And that's exactly what the R10 shows, is four lots deep, running north to south. Um, if you look at the zoning map, which is in your packet, and on the screen, you see the predominant zoning pattern uh, is R15 on the north side. To the south, you have R10 and PRD10. Uh, the PRD10 is the following <coughs> circle area. Um, it sounds like R10, but the way PRD was written years ago, you actually got a density bonus. And most of those lots are around the 8,000 square foot variety, or some are even smaller. Um, so it's a little less than the R10 standard, and then you have R10 neighborhood directly to the west. So you have a mixed residential in terms of subdivision designs, but it's certainly a single family residential corridor, and that certainly should remain. Um, it's simply a question of what flavor of single family. In this case, because of the shape of the property and the minor differences between R15 and R10 and what they allow, Staff is recommending approval of the R10. So we have found that consistent with the conference plan and our stance for access of the power. I'm glad to answer any more questions I might have other than what we talked about the work sessions. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Mr. Willis. Uh, so you're saying that what we're looking at is one more lot than what they would normally be able to do? Yes, sir. And that's, 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 yeah. All right. Any other questions? Any questions? Mr. Page. Um, what is the rationale behind the 50 feet on a street right of way? I mean, is that something that's fairly common, or is there some reason that, you know, most of these streets are anywhere from 20 to 30 feet okay. wide? It's 50 feet of right of way, right. pavement width of 24 feet. Uh, 50 foot right of way with curb and gutter is extremely common right. um, to allow room for the road and utilities and drainage to go along with the road. There has to be a minimum separation between water and sewer lines, for example. Right. So but the actual why the 50 foot street feet. itself would be 24, 25. 24 feet of pavement. Okay. That's all. <coughs> any other questions? <coughs> Not hearing none. Is there any? Okay, Mr. Lewis. Really would like to miss the opportunity. <laughs> Is the column circle aligning with that new road? Is that going to line up? Yes, sir. It needs to line up at least pretty close. Um, so it dictates that the road come out from the east property line just a few feet to line up. Any other questions? Okay. 